So welcome to everyone. Um, I'm going to first just shortly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Alexander. I'm uh, actually coming from Faculty of Civil Engineering uh, from University of Belgrade, from the Department of Geodesy and Geoinformatics. And uh, today I'm here with my three colleagues. Actually, we have a spin-off company named Gilab, which actually participates in the project uh, called Open Earth Monitor, right? And uh, this re research is actually a result, as, like an outcome from, from this project. Um, today, the, the subject of the workshop is actually, I mean, I'm going to first present you the Meta Europe one kilometer data set, which is actually a high resolution daily gridded meteorological data set uh, for Europe, uh, which spans from 1961 to 2020. It's actually right a historical date. Um, uh, you can see here the structure of the workshop. Uh, we will mix everything like uh, I'm gonna talk a bit and then I'm gonna do some demonstration in between and so on. So firstly, I'm gonna explain how we developed the, this data set and what was the methodology, accuracy and so on. Then how you can uh, access the data and use it. Uh, then we developed the daily meta platform, which actually uh, serves to, 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 to serve the data, right? To the end users. And then uh, we will talk about uh, ChatGPT. We fine tune the ChatGPT model so you can actually ask questions and talk with the, the data set that we developed and uh, some uh, future remarks, right? So uh, if you have any question, you can please stop me. I mean, we can be informal, so, or in the end, I'm okay with both. Uh, so the Metro Europe data set consists of five variables, maximum, minimum, and mean temperature, uh, total precipitation, and mean sea level pressure. Uh, we also aggregated these data sets to, to generate uh, monthly annual summaries and also long-term means. Uh, it has a one kilometer spatial resolution, uh, currently, it's in uh, 3035 uh, projection, but uh, eventually we're going to transform it into Equi 7 projection because we are working also. We actually already developed the data for the whole world, right? The global data. So eventually, the whole data set will be in Equi 7 projection. It's a daily data set uh, covering, as I said, the period from 1961 to 2020, but we are working on uh, delivering, let's say, real-time, uh, as as more as possible real-time data. Uh, this data set covers uh, Europe, and the methodology used uh, to generate the data set is spatial temporal regression Krieging. Um, how spatial temporal regression Krieging works, I mean, I'm going to briefly explain. If you have any questions, I have a few more slides if we need to go more into details. So uh, we actually first model the uh, the trend. So we use some uh, environmental covariates to generate the trend and also the observations. And then, I mean, uh, we model the residuals. So what is left from the trend, right? Uh, with uh, spatial temporal Krieging. And then when we add these two, we generate the maps. Uh, as for the observation, we use three sources. Uh, we use uh, CNOP data from Ogimet service, and we use uh, Global Historical Climate Network daily and uh, the data set from uh, Dutch Royal Institute. Uh, we did some uh, pre-processing, right, uh, removing the outliers, uh, removing uh, spatial duplicates, and so on. And you can see here below the, the number of stations used uh, for Europe. Um, here you can see also, I mean, I would not go so much in the detail, uh, which predictors we use, then what is the accuracy of the trend from the, for the temperatures. I mean, everything is explained in the, in this paper, uh, yeah. and uh, other authors. So you can check there, I mean, the covariates and the accuracy and so on. And uh, just to mention for the precipitation and sea level pressure, we actually did not have a trend there. We only used the observation to, to generate the data. 
Um, regarding the accuracy assessment, uh, you can see here the results. Uh, the accuracy is pretty high um, for the temperature data set and for the sea level pressure, a bit lower for the, the, the first period, uh, probably because of the lack of the station for the Europe. And uh, you can see the accuracy of precipitation is also a bit lower, but uh, it makes sense, right? Because the precipitation is more complex variable. So uh, we are pretty satisfied with these results. And we did the accuracy assessment using only uh, one station out cross validation, right? Uh, so we put one station out from the data set, do a prediction with, without that station, and then compare the results. And you can also see here the, the accuracy of the classification model for, for precipitation. I forgot to say, so we uh, model precipitation in two steps. First, we predict the precipitation occurrence, and then we actually do the regression. So we predict the actual amount of the precipitation. So uh, firstly, um, the the whole data set is in uh, GOT format. It's cloud optimized, actually GOT. So uh, we plan to put the whole data set on uh, on Zenodo. Currently, we added only I think fifteen years for temperature, but we will eventually uh, put all the data there. Um, yeah, so I can show you uh, how you can access the data. Uh, you can use first the uh, uh, GDAL library, right? Um, I can show you that first. Um, right, if you haven't used a GDAL library before, you have to download it, install it, and so on. But it looks something like this. There is a common uh, good location info uh, where you can add a path to the a specific file, right? This is the URL uh, to Zenodo repository. Uh, the naming convection of the files are like, first there is a variable, then uh, this is the, let's say, um, aggregation level. We have also monthly and annual data, I will show you later, and uh, the, the time reference. So this is the year 2000, the 1st of January. And uh, at the, at in, in the end, the, the projection. And the coordinates for which you want to retrieve the data set. And here is the result. And also to mention, uh, the whole data set is uh, multiplied with 10, right? So we store the data as integer values. So this value should be divide we tend to obtain the, the real results. Uh, you can also import the data into the QGIS. Um, you can add the new uh, raster layer. We choose the protocol HTTPS and then just Click it. So we have a bit slower internet connection here. So probably to, I mean, not probably it will work fast. I mean, oh, here it is. And of course you can set some that and you can make some queries to receive the results and so on. So that's another way to, to retrieve the data. Of course, you can download the data from the node and use it however you want. Um, yeah. So the next thing, uh, we developed the daily meta uh, portal in order to serve the data and also on top of that, we created some additional services such as point query or uh, download the bulk of the data so you can download, for example, for one location, the all 60 years and all variables. And also some uh, viewer, you, you have here some panel. Also, there is an option to 
I can show you again all of that. Um, there is an uh, there is also an option to to download the data per polygon, right? And so on. And uh, you have here on the right you can choose the variables. Uh, what you can see here, it's the actually the difference between two long-term means. So you can check for the difference between two periods. You have here uh, annual and monthly um, long terms for a specific location. And you can also choose here time, time scale and uh, data range. And you can see here the results. You can download them as CSV and image and so on. As you can see, the daily data is uh, here uh, grayed, right? Once you log in or register, you'll be able to also... Uh, so actually, we are trying to commercialize a uh, point query on the, the daily data set. And also, we will talk about that chatbot that we created. But for the conference, we will share with you some promo code. So you will get some credits you can try to to use also daily data set and this uh, chatbot. Um, for example, or let's take it for one year. Um, daily data, so you have to confirm request. You have here an estimation, how much of the credits you will spend on that and so on. So one credit is actually a piece of information for one location and one day. Um, okay, let's go back to the, and also the, the part of the data set, uh, actually the aggregated data set is uh, published on uh, Open Earth Monitor um, WebGIS portal, and it's linked to the daily meta portal and so on. And you can see there uh, some of the use cases where you can use the data sets, for example, for insurance, for climate change, for agriculture, and so on. Uh, also on top of the data, we created an API service. You have the link here. You have a Swagger, Swagger documentation, so you can check all of the parameters, how you can actually automate the, the, the data retrieval. Mm. So I can now show you one example how you can retrieve the data using the API. Uh, you can actually call this URL through the browser. In the end, you will have the API key. And the API key, oh, sorry. And the API key you have to, you can find it um, on your profile and uh, here it is. So you can copy it, paste it here and to retrieve the data, right? This is again for one month for, for January, 1991. And also you can do that through Python. I can show you that too. Mm. using the request library, right? You should again uh, use your API key, right? I can take this whole part. And you can write in the end, get the values in the JSON format and you can automate, right? Data retrieval and so on. Yeah, uh, besides that, we also uh, added two new functions to the R meta package. So you can actually get the data, so actually do the point query through the R meta package. We created one function, uh, which is actually good, I mean, suitable for retrieving the coordinates for a specific location name. And also there is a function that actually wraps up the, the API, right? It's the same parameters here. Um, sorry. As you can see here for the aggregation level, we have 
daily, monthly, and annual data set. And for time scale, you can use aggregated data, which is actually right accumulation and uh, the long term means. You can set right from two period or to set some time references and to put latitude and log it. And on the left, you have one example for retrieving the data. Of course, the R meta package you can uh, download with the up to date version is in GitHub, but from time to time we we upload it, uh, we sync it with the with the R CRAN package, right? Uh, I can also uh, show you this how it works in R. So you have to put your API key. You need the JSON light and the meta package. So this first line retrieved the coordinates for Belgrade, as you can see here. And then we use get meteo uh, function to retrieve, in this example, uh, minimal temperature. Aggregation level is right, aggregation, aggregate, uh, daily data, again from January, uh, for January 1991. And we put latitude, longitude, and you should put your API key. And then you got your data sets in data frame format and you can use it further. Um, yeah, and uh, we come up to an idea because an open AI actually has a new functionality to fine tune the chat GPT models. So you can create your own training data set and you can fine tune the model for your purposes. I mean, in this case, our idea was to, to create a service. So when you ask a question, for example, to retrieve um, temperature data or precipitation or whatever uh, for a specific time period and for a specific location to actually to generate the results so the user can quickly get the data. Or for the users who are not, let's say, uh, does not have an uh, informatics background and so on. So the, the workflow goes like this. So when you ask a question through the chat GPT API, we trigger right our fine-tuned model. I will explain how we fine-tuned it. And then uh, you will get, actually, I mean, the client will get the R code which actually when you run it, you will get the results. Uh, we run it on a client side using WebR and then obtain the results. So how we fine tune the model, we created so far around uh, 115 training examples, uh, which maps uh, some common questions about the, the historical meteorological data, right? For, for a specific location and time period. And we also created the R code, which will get from which we can get the results. And also through the system message, we explain uh, actually to chat GPT model, how he should, well, it should act, right? And uh, to use those to get metal and get uh, coordinates function to obtain the results. We then converted the data to the JSONL format, which is suitable for ChatGPT, and uh, fine tune the model so we can we can use it. So now I'm gonna just run through some examples and we can uh, do some demonstration. And if you come up with some question, we can test it. So the, the let's say the simplest question is to retrieve uh, in this example, daily temperature data for September 2020 for a specific location. In this case, it's Lecce, Italy. As you can see here, you can see here the results. In, it's in like data frame format, right? You can download it, download it to CSV file. And also we provide the, the code in this code tab. So you can check the code. Actually, this is for more advanced users. So if you want, you can copy it to your R studio and uh, test it or modify it and so on. Also, you can obtain the plot 
this is an example for uh, of a question to obtain the plot. You can see here how the plot looks like and the um, the code, right, are used to generate the plot. You can also compare uh, um, some meteorological variable for two locations. Um, you, you can do that. I mean, you can receive also the plot. You can also compare two time periods. So the outcome doesn't have to be to only plot or text. It can be both, so you can download them both. So if you want to try now or, or later, you can use this uh, promo code, uh, Luxembourg 2020. So you will receive 1 million credit, as I explained. Um, I can show you, you can do this in your profile and here in promo code, you can enter it and you will get that uh, 1 million credit. And uh, right, once you register, uh, you, I think the you have to create the API token so you can use the chat GPT. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now I can show you some examples. So at first, uh, in this initializing part, we are trying to load all of the R libraries and so on. So now it's ready to to ask some questions. Um, I can copy. Um, some questions from here. Yeah, so you will get the results. As I said, you can download this CSV file. I can do that also. Um, you can preview it and use it, right? And also you can check here the code. You will see here also the definition of that get coordinates and get data function and also the part which actually do the thing right and you can copy it and put it and use it in in our studio and so on uh, also there is an option for a feedback so you can actually leave your feedback because uh probably for some we tested it and in some cases for some complex question and so on uh let's say the model put like one comma somewhere where it shouldn't be so the, the code will not run so you can leave us a feedback that you are not satisfied with the results and put some comment and uh, from time to time we our plan is to uh, do the fine tuning again and to improve the model and so on of course if you're satisfied with the results you can also mark that so we can use that example again to to improve the model. Um, I can try now some more examples. If you have some, I mean, maybe it's better to do like real life demonstration. So if someone has any question about historical data, I can show you um, one example with the plot. Here it is. So we has an error. So if something like this come to you, so you can check the R code and what was the problem and so on. But every time you trigger the results, so model each time will give you probably the slightly different output, right? Because ChatGPT is a textual model. That's why we want to so here it is. That's why we actually use the R code to, to generate the results, right? You cannot actually directly communicate with the data. So here it is. And also uh, it gave us all three parameters for temperature. 
you can also download the plot, right? And so 